Hello everyone, Isaac Segunro here. In this video, we're going to be talking about Power Apps, but we're going to be talking about a certain function. Um, today, we're going to be focused on the lookup function. So we're going to focus on the lookup function, and if we have time, the is blank function. Now, the reason we're going to be going over these is because this will give you a foundation of other videos that we're going to be creating. So we're going to be creating later on um, a conference request form and it has a two-level approval process where there is a manager and a director and when you open up the form based on who is logged in if it's the manager logged in a certain section of the form will appear and if it's the director that's logged in a certain section of the form will appear just for them to approve and to leave comments and um, the user if it's just the user who and the user is not a director or a manager, the user wouldn't see any of those fields. The user would just see what they need to fill out. So in order to do that kind of functionality, we're going to have to understand lookup function. Now, let me introduce you all. If you don't, if you aren't aware, there is this site and I'll leave this in our in our in, in at the bottom of the Google we have filter search and lookup and we're gonna get to filter and search but we're gonna talk about lookup today and we're also gonna talk about uh, is blank now this is great documentation on how a lot of these different functions work so definitely take a look at it you don't have to memorize anything. There are some that you're going to use so often that it's just going to be in your memory. Um, and then if you're, if you need to do something, you can just come go through this list and, and this list of functions and, and see, um, what there is. So let's begin. Look up. Okay. So let me scroll down right here. It says, the lookup function finds the first record in the table that satisfies a formula. Use lookup to find a single record that matches one or more criteria. And let me scroll down so you can see how the lookup function, how do you use it? So the lookup function, it, this is it. Lookup function, you, so you have your data source and then you have the formula and then you have this reduction formula, but this is just, this is optional. So this table represents the data source. This is whatever you're searching. So this lookup is going to search this data source and this formula, it has some type of condition. So, you know, I can say, you know, if, oh, for example, this right here, if, if the flavor is equal to chocolate, you know, um, so the function returns the first record that results to true. So it, 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 the function goes through this ice cream data source and if it finds a match chocolate flavor equal to chocolate it's going to set it to true um well the formula it, if the formula is true but the, what the lookup does is it returns a record or you know so this meaning that this is a record so chocolate this whole line is a, is a record so if this formula if it's true then it returns this so flavor equal to chocolate true then return this whole record and then we can use that at work within our Power App. So let's go through a few e examples so I can show you how this works. And we're going to use a list as our data source. So let's come down here. So here is our list. And I'm just going to open up Power Apps so you can understand. I'm going to open this up in Power Apps, Customize Power Apps. So that's sh this SharePoint list is basically ice cream so it, it was basically what we were looking at on the Microsoft page so a chocolate vanilla strawberry mint and it has quantities and on, on order so let's go and see how to work with these different formulas um, because once you understand this it'll help prepare you for what we're gonna do in um, coming in, in up, upcoming videos so I don't want to really do anything here I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna click screen a blank screen so I can have another screen and I'm gonna connect my data source so ice cream is already connected great so let's connect it to this page to the screen 
So I'm going to come here. my data source uh, what's going on here let's see oh data source okay I'm just gonna add a label I mean I think because I already have a data source so label and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to this app app and I'm gonna go to the on start so now the on start is just a function where um, once once this application opens up whatever is within here runs so I'm gonna do a lookup so let's 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 follow the, the, the syntax so let's do lookup and in ton of sense, it, it, it recognizes what it is. So it kind of guesses for you. So look up. And it's, as you can see, it says source, and then you add a condition. So let's say the source that we want to check is our ice cream. So ice, which it also recognizes because we're already connected to that. We're connected to that data source. So ice cream. And now we got to come up with the condition. So the condition is an if you remember the columns we have, we have flavor, quantity, order. So let's say where flavor is equal to vanilla. So let's, oops, let me close that. That's later. So flavor, and it recognizes it. So flavor is equal vanilla. Now I can close it off here, or I can go ahead and say, and if you remember, there is another, um, so if I leave it like this, this returns a whole record. This will return a whole record. And let me show you what I mean. So let me set this to a variable set. Uh, let me say my ice cream and I'll explain to you what a variable is so a variable is sort of like a bucket this is a global variable and this variable can be used anywhere so a variable is just a hold in place it just holds the data for you so I'm gonna come down here now that I have I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say ice cream record so I'm using the text property of this label and I'm going to use something I'm going to use an ampersand that's concatenate and if you remember our lookup I called it um, let me go see what did I call it my ice cream so let me come back here I'm going to say my ice cream now remember this is a whole record so I can say my ice cream dot and it it I can grab whatever values that I want so if you remember we have flavor quantity on order so let's go for quantity so quantity so let's go look at that again let me let's go back to here so I am saying look up basically search this ice cream where the flavor column has vanilla in it where the flavor column has vanilla in it and then once you find it um, once you well once you find it then return the whole give me the whole record so the whole record is 
the whole the whole item. So vanilla is going to return this whole item. And once it returns the whole item, I can pick and choose what I want. I can pick and choose. I can pick if I want quantity order. So let's do this. So let me come here, and I'm going to say, come here. Oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I'm, okay, my ice cream that like, give me the quantity. So if I come here, let me let's let's run this and see what happens. I may have to. There you go. So there it is. Give me the quantity. It's 200. So let's go. So vanilla. Give me the quantity 200. So let me do this as well. And the reason it's doing that is because it's a record. It wants a single item, and that's so now I can say, let's say on order. So I say dot on order. Now let's say I, I, I knew for sure what exactly I, which which column I wanted. I didn't want the whole record returned. I just wanted quantity. If I knew for sure that's what I wanted and that I didn't have to use any one of these columns, so what I would do is let me remove this. Oh, let, let me go to my app. So what I would do is here in the app I would say I would do another comma. I would do a comma. And I would say, give me on, give me quantity. So then I can come here. I need to do a run on start again. So I'm basically saying, okay, do a search in this ice cream data source list. Find me flavor where it's equal to vanilla and then just give me the quantity and so this is how I and I am storing the results of this into this bucket into this variable see it's equal to 200 I can also say give me instead of quantity give me on order so I can come here and I can say give me on order on order So let me come here and do this. I gotta always do a run on site and it's 50. So there are basically two things I did here. The first thing that I kind of introduced was this lookup. Lookup searches a data source based on a formula. And it, it only returns the very first one. So the first match that it finds, that's what it'll return. So for example, let's come in here. I'm gonna add another column. I mean, another record. I'm gonna say another item. I'm gonna say, let's add vanilla again. So vanilla, 700, and let's say um, 32. And let's come here. Let's refresh this database, this data source, refresh. App on start. So let me do this again on start. And as you can see, it's returning me 50 still. So it returns to me the very first vanilla, which is this one. So let's switch this around. So what if I said this is 700 instead? Let's say this is 700. 99. Okay, come on. What's going on? Let me just edit the item. Okay, we changed it. All right. So now let's go refresh and see. Like I said, the lookup returns to you the very first item where there is a match. So let's go back. 
let me come here and let me do a run and start as you can see it returned 99 99 so as opposed to and we're going to talk about a filter next time a filter returns we if it's a match it we just return it so a filter we return um anything where there's a flavor equal to vanilla but we're talking about lookup today so i hope that made sense let me clear this out okay well i'm gonna leave that the way it is so we talked about a lookup and then the next thing is we talked about well let's let me, let's go, go back to set and let me bring this over here remember i told you this is a great resource to learn about different things so set set function in power apps use a set function to set the value of a global variable which temporarily holds a piece of information information such as the number of times the user has selected a button or the result of data operation um, so it can hold anything it can hold single value a record a table reference strings numbers you know so these are global variables and so what we did in our example is we said when this lookup when you whatever you find set it to this my ice cream so this is how you set a variable so it'll be set you give it a name and then when you give it a name you assign this is how you assign something to it so I can also say, you know, set, you know, whether, you know, to, I can say stormy, this is a string, stormy. And then I can use, I can call that weather anywhere in my app. So I can come here and I can, let me add a text to the page, a label to the page. And I can come in here, I'm going to say, well, let me say, weather, I'm going to do a concatenate. So that ampersand concatenates, meaning it joins two things together. So I'm going to say weather. That's the variable that I created. And let me come in and me see if this can do this. Stormy. So weather stormy. So weather stormy. So that's a, a, that's what a variable, that's how you set a global variable. And a global variable is available in any screen. So even if I come to this here, let's say I add a label. up okay I'm gonna add a label label and let's say weather see stormy so what's the other thing my ice cream I can let, let me add my ice cream as well label so if I say my ice cream 99 so a global variable can be used anywhere within your application in any of your screens and that's the advantage of a global variable it's you can it helps you to it helps you have a, a, a great app um, I mean add lots of functionality functionality to your app so let's go back here so as a recap the set allows you to create a temporary bucket just to hold information i like to call it a bucket because that's what it is that's what you can compare it to and then the lookup um it allows you to search a data source in our in our case our data source is a sharepoint list and so it allows you to search a data source based on some conditions so the condition here is if the flavor in my data source and this flavor is is the column in this data source 
if it's equal to something, so vanilla, chocolate, whatever, um, and I want a specific data column. So give me the whatever whatever match you find here. Give me this. So chocolate equal to vanilla. Give me this on order or quantity. So give me the on order. So this return just the on order, and then it'll store it in this my ice cream. Now, if you don't, this third parameter here is optional. So if you don't you do that, it returns the whole record to the my ice cream. And then to use the my ice cream, so as you can see, it's giving me an error because it wants to know, hey, what do you want? I can say, give me, and it does IntelliSense for you, so I can say, give me quantity. Uh, if I come here and I do an on start, the quantity shows up, you know, or I can say, give me um, flavor. As you can see, the flavor comes up. So it returns, when I have it like this, it returns a whole record. If I add another column, I can specify which one, I, which one of those columns that I want. So I hope that made sense. Um, in our next video, we are going to go over the is blank. I'm not going to do it here because this video is getting too long. So I'm gonna, we're going to go over this one here, is blank. And once we go over is blank, then we can get into what we're going to build based on that information that we have just learned and what we're going to learn. So let me just show you. So to kind of whet your appetite, we have this conference request here. And in this conference request, when you open up the form, um, when the user opens up this form, they're going to have this conference re registration request form. When they submit it, a workflow kicks off and then the manager gets a notification. Now, the only reason I am seeing this here is because I am a manager. A regular user wouldn't see this section here. And so the way that I have this working is I am using a list. So let me show you the list. So if I come here, go to site contents, and then I'm gonna open up my form access level. And as you can see, in this form access level, I am doing a lookup into here. I'm doing a condition saying, hey, where this name is equal to this name, to, to, to my name um, and where he's a manager if there's a match show this and let me show you how that works because I'm going to remove myself well, I'm going to change this to director so director let me go back to my form and I'm going to do a refresh now, if I do new, and as you can see, the manager elements, the, the fields are gone. And that's because I'm not a manager, I'm a director. Um, you're not seeing the director fields because I haven't set up the director yet. We'll do that together in another, vi in another video. Um, but for now, we to make that functionality work, you would have to learn how to set a variable and how the lookup works. And then the last thing we're going to learn in our next video is the is blank function. And so once we know those three things, then we'll be able to do this. So have practice makes perfect. So just keep practicing. Um, I'm going to provide this let me see where is it at I'm gonna provide I'm gonna provide this in the in the in, in at the bottom of the video so you can have access to this page this is the Microsoft Docs um, and then you can what you can do is come to this page look for lookup which is right here it's in alphabetical order lookup and then once you do that if you scroll down you can just do some of these examples so create a list called ice cream, add this data into it, open up power apps, and then just play around with it. Just 
do these things here and you know you can make up your own you used to play around with it so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video um if you have any questions just write